This morning I'm, we're going to cover how to build a dynamic pivot table. This is going to assume that you know how to build a pivot table in general. So if you don't know how, there's a previous video on building a pivot table. I'll link it in the description on this video. So let's suppose that we have a table with data like this. For instance, we have various values, practice books, games, prizes, candy, and apps. And each of them have a request count of various in integer values. So what we want to do is basically we want to turn this table to where these distinct values in this column and request are going to be our columns, and then we're going to add up the total sum so of these requests. Now, um, the first thing, obviously, for those of you who are, who are familiar with dynamic, I'm sorry, uh, that are familiar with pivot tables, what you'll know is that we need to get the distinct column. So what I want to show you is the first step. <clears throat> and this is actually, uh, there was a, another video that I covered grouping items by, which if I can find, I'll, I'll link that in the description. This looks very familiar with that. So we're grabbing the column names here. That's what we're doing um, with C and uh, we're using this operator to get the, that information. Obviously when you're building a pivot table one of the keys is putting it in that value between the parentheses and the in value between the parentheses. The difference between something that's dynamic is that, and I'll demonstrate this in a second, is that as this value changes, so let's go back to this table, as we add new requests the pivot table will automatically pick up those new requests. Manually building a pivot table is not a really great idea in my opinion. Almost all pivot tables should be dynamic if there's going to be values that are added or there could be values that are added. So we have the columns as we see. And then the next thing, we're just going to go ahead and this is just a basic pivot table statement. But the key really is going to be getting those columns and then passing those columns here and passing those columns in the initial select. And so what it'll do is it will actually produce the total sum of each of those values. As a note too, here's where it isn't dynamic. If you wanted to switch from sum to count, we just want to count how many fields there are, we could do that as well. But in this case, the actual calculation is not going to be dynamic. So we'll still have to rebuild pivot table statements for different queries, but the idea is as we add columns, it's automatic. And just to demonstrate this, so let's go to request, and so we have practice books, games, prizes, candy, and apps. So let's go ahead and insert some new values into the table. Just to show, and what we're going to do is insert completely new values. And so to make it easy on us, we're just going to do new. And do new and we're going to do new and we'll do one, two, and then one. And then check. Okay, so we basically added three new columns total and um, there should be a total of four as far as the sum. And you will see there's four as far as the sum, and then if we were going to do count instead, we'll see that new has uh, three values, because we added three values. So that's how to build a dynamic pivot table. Um, the key piece is going to be getting the columns, uh, the distinct columns basically. And uh, then it's just a regular pivot statement where you're going to select those columns and then you're going to put that in the request. And then from there you can simply automate it. This makes things a lot simpler. And uh, in, in many environments that I've worked in, this is, this is something that they actually will manually go in and will add uh, to this part of the statement right here and this part of the statement as they add uh, columns or as they add requests or whatnot, and then this can all be automated to where you don't have to rebuild it each time.